Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, third webinar of uh, Louis Bellet. First of all, uh, let me introduce myself for the one uh, who don't know me. My name is uh, Hervé Baour, and I'm uh, responsible for uh, Glomar Marketing and International Sales. Uh, so this is the third uh, webinar. We, we already made two uh, that you can find on our uh, YouTube uh, channel. And the first one was dedicated to our uh, end meal dedicated for uh, stainless steel, so the super finishing uh, mill. And uh, the second one was um, for the drilling in titanium, our expert drill, uh, so-called uh, 353, 353, the free flute uh, drill that is uh, working outstandingly in uh, titanium, but also in other material as well. So. You can uh, look at them uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, today we will talk about uh, gear and, and uh, hope cutter. Um, let me show you uh, this. So we will talk about, about uh, these cutters. Um, they are uh, dedicated for a burr free um, a gear production. You will be able to, to learn uh, how our, our uh, cutters are, are meant for uh, in order to, to produce this, these uh, gears. Uh, during the presentation, you will have the opportunity to ask questions. So uh, go ahead in the, in the Q&R uh, section of your interface and just write, type your, your question during the presentation when you do have the, it in mind. Uh, and we will answer them uh, at the end of the seminar. Uh, we also will um, uh, do some uh, surveys in order to, oops, sorry, surveys uh, in order to, to, to better know your needs and uh, um, for which uh, application you, you do work. Um, and so in order to, uh, to, to start with one, I, I will open the first poll. Um, asking you in uh, in which field the wheels that you produce, if you do so, uh, are the, the gear used. Um, I'll let you some um, seconds to, to answer and um, we will go on and uh, uh, with a little history of uh, hop cutting or hop cutters production uh, for Louis Bellet. So some years ago, I would say uh, about 20 years now, um, Louis Bellet want, or was requested to, to produce some hop cutters. And um, we tried to find uh, some machines uh, that are available on the market uh, to produce the, 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 the hops, uh, precise enough for the request we had from our customers, but we couldn't find any. So we began to, to produce, uh, design, and uh, mount our own machines. Uh, so the, that was yeah in the in the late nineties uh, or uh, beginning of two thousand, and uh, so it led us to to make our homemade machines. Uh, they were all here in uh, Vendlincourt, so in the headquarter. But uh, since now one year about, uh, we moved them to to Porrentruy, so our second um, second. Uh, uh, location, so uh, you might know we have uh, two locations now, one here and one uh, 10 kilometers away from here. And uh, all the, the, the hope cutting tools are produced in, in Porrentruy, so in an uh, autonomous way. Um, the, the modules that we do produce, or the, the, the hopes uh, we do produce, are going from one down to 0 0.01. So it's really tiny, really precise, really, really small. So in terms of DP uh, for, the, for the ones who use uh, diametral pitch, it's uh, 25 to 2,500. So yeah, it's really fine pitch gears. Um, thank you for having answered the, the, the first uh, uh, question. Um, now we will we will talk about two um, challenges you do have while producing your, your gears. The first one is, um, uh, is, the, is the burr, of course, and how to remove that. 
Um, and this leads me to ask you the second poll uh, and to know what, uh, what or where are your uh, problems while producing the, the gears? Is it the burr, is it the profile geometry, uh, etc.? cetera? So I, I leave you some seconds once again to, to answer this. So let me share my screen. So um, burr uh, is typically something uh, that we need to, to, take, to take care of. And uh, one way of um, removing the burrs uh, on a normal way of, uh, of uh, hopping is to use um, insert tools. So you see here a video. I, he I hope you do see the video. Um, and uh, so you, you do produce, uh, this is made on a, on a lace machine. So you do, you come and plunge, uh, you make the profile of your, of your gear. And then you come with the with the cutter with the uh, with the inserts to remove the burr in the front and in the back. This works uh, fairly well. However, uh, the the issue you might have is that the burr on the face is removed, but it goes inside of the gear, and this is not uh, what you want to do at the end of the day. So. Uh, a way to, to, to remove this burr or, or to, to, to produce burr, um, gears without burrs are to use two uh, hubs on a, on, a, on a shank or on, a, on an arbor. Um, these two cutters are um, these are not designed but placed, mounted, uh, one tail uh, uh, to, the, to the head. So you you have a two cutter, one is cutting left and what is one, the other one is uh, cutting right. And the standard way is to go from uh, side A to side B. So you plunge, you, you do the, uh, the, the gear production, the, the gear machining uh, from A to B. So the A side is clean because you, you are uh, machining it on a, um, you are machining it on a, on a climb milling. And um, afterwards, you once uh, arrive to the, to the B side, uh, you have the burrs that goes outside of the, of the gear. So you reverse both the rotation. So from the spindle of the tool and from the uh, spindle of the, of the part, you move your uh, your assembly with the two hop cutters on the second cutter, and you do plunge uh, towards uh, side B in order to cut the burr which were formed uh, at the at the B side. Uh, what you need to to know in order to to produce that is that is that uh, the the burrs. Uh, or the or the profile of the of the hub needs to be perfectly aligned uh, with the other one. But uh, doing this uh, might lead to some uh, uh, issue um, because when you put two hubs on a on a shank on a, on an arbor, you you might have some uh, run out both actual and, and, uh, and uh, lateral uh, run out. So it's not easy to, to mount uh, two hubs on the same shank. So uh, at Louis Bellet, uh, what we propose, and this is what we will uh, talk about uh, now, um, is the duplex hub cutter. So you can have it as I saw you Maybe I can show you it uh, once again. So you can have it on a shank, like on the left hand side, or on a ring on the right hand side. Now I come back on the on this. So you have both uh, cutting edges or cutting uh, zone on the same shank, which uh, leads to a, a, a better or a, a more precise. Um, uh, alignment of the two uh, cutting zone. You have, uh, uh, you do not have any issue with the with the alignment, with the runout, because it's made on a 
on a monoblock way. And um, also, the, what, what really takes you time uh, to, to produce this uh, or to, to set up the machine is to really precisely align the, the, um, the helix or the, or the profile of the, of the cutter or the, of the hub inside the, the gear itself on the second, um, on the second uh, uh, cutting zone. So here, you, we, what we do is, the, is to have the same helix uh, on the zone A and on the zone B. So uh, you, you are sure, uh, and you do not need to set up this, you are sure that once you, once you are on zone two, you are perfectly aligned with the, with the, gear, um, uh, the gear part. So it saves you um, dozens of minutes and sometimes hours in terms of setup. So as you know, um, uh, time is money. So you you save you save a lot of time and you save a lot of of uh, dollar uh, in using the, that kind of uh, cutter. Um, what I can show you now is uh, is the is the is a video that we made uh, uh, at our customer. So. This is a Tornos uh, machine. Uh, we, did, we did that at a customer uh, right next door. So the, the cutter is uh, fairly tiny, so six millimeter in diameter, eight millimeter width, with two time pitch in, the, in, in between. You have a left and right area, and um, also uh, it's a module of uh, 0 0.1, so it's uh, quite small, uh, small gear that needs to be cut. So I said the, the cutter is a duplex, uh, a ring type. Uh, the, the dimension of the cutter, we, we saw that. We will machine a brass gear. The same cutter actually made a, a stainless and a brass uh, gear. We did that on a Tornos Evodeco 10. Uh, the, the hub, uh, um, speed it was a uh, 5000 rpm and the part so with a ratio uh, it was a 625 and the feed rate that you can see uh, per tease is a 2 micron and uh, on the y axis is 6 micron um, uh, of millimeter so let's have a look at how it looks like so here we will um, go ahead with the first part of the gear, so the zone, uh, the, the first zone. So we come, we make the, uh, the cut of the gear. Then we stop the, the, the spindle, we, re we re reverse <laughs> the, the, ro the rotation sense, both on the hub and on the part. And uh, lastly, we come on the second zone. You can see that we are now in the second zone and we just come up and cut or remove the uh, the burr. So this is the part uh, that uh, that was made uh, without touching anything, no post operation. And you can also see that the part is uh, really tiny. It's a one millimeter diameter and zero point two seven uh, height of uh, geometry. So it's it's really it's really small. What we also did was to uh, present or, or, or simulate uh, um, a gear hubbing uh, first with only one pass, so without the, 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 the duplex um, uh, process. So on the left hand side, you see the part with the burr. So you see, even though it's small, the burr is, uh, is, really, is really there and, and there, there are a lot. And doing the second pass, the, so the second cutting zone, uh, you see on the right hand side the um, the part which was cut. So once again, no post process. Um, it's clean. Geometry was perfect, and uh, the, yeah, the customer were, was really uh, excited about it. What I can um, make now is to change the video and maybe show you. I hope it will work. Excuse 
Excuse me, just one sec. I do have here the the video of uh, of one um, of one part. Ah, yeah, you do see it now. So it's uh, it's really tiny. You, I, I put a ruler on the side. So uh, these are millimeter. Uh, the 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 big one is the millimeter, and the the small one is a half of a millimeter. So you see that. Yeah, I try to put more lights. You see, it's really it's really tiny, but the the shape, the geometry is really is really perfect. And I can also show you the 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 cutter we we use to make it to produce it. So it's a it's a duplex one. Up. Yeah. So you see both uh, um, region left and left cut and right cut. Um, yeah, um, this um, this leads me to to make the the last poll. Let me put uh, the other video. Yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah, uh, I ask you the the last uh, questionnaire. Asking you which kind of material do you do you machine with the uh, with the with the hub you are using? Um, uh, oh, excuse me, it's it's in French. So the first one is inox stainless. Uh, second is laiton is a uh, brass, uh, steel, beryllium, copper, and aluminum. Excuse me for the for the for not having uh, translated it. Uh, so uh, as I said before. Uh, I do have it here, but it's it's really it's really small. You cannot you cannot see it or you barely see it. But I do have a second uh, a second part which was made in uh, in uh, stainless steel with the same hop cutter. Uh, it works uh, also outstandingly. What I wanted to say, yes, is um, from the experience for, uh, of our customer, they said well, uh, we went with a, with a colleague of mine to 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 make the movie to to uh, to film the the machining so we arrived with the with the cutter and the person was really uh, experienced so he knew uh, he already did the uh, 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 dual um, gear hobbing but without our duplex tool so he uh, he had the the two the two cutters uh, so we arrived and we said, uh, hello, we want to make the, the video. Um, and uh, he said to us, okay, uh, do you come back tomorrow? Uh, we said, no, we have to, to do it today because uh, we do not have time, much more time. And he said, well, I'm not sure it's, uh, it's going to work. Uh, so please go ahead and, and grab a coffee and come back in a while. So we went to, to grab a coffee, 10 minutes, we came back and he said, it's amazing. I never experienced that. So he could uh, mount the, the the cutter on the machine, on a Torrance machine, Swissless machine, uh, mount it, uh, set machine setup, and the first part was good. I mean, he was completely amazed. He never saw that uh, before. So he he told us. Um, I mean, usually it takes hours to to make the setup of the already to put the balls hubs. Uh, on a on an arbor, and then you need to to set up with the with the synchronization or to be sure that the the profile of the second hub is exactly perfectly aligned with the gear. So yeah, he was really um, surprised that it was so easy. So yeah, uh, that was the the little story uh, behind that. Um, what I can also uh, mention, I go back and share my screen again like uh, what i can also uh, tell you is um we of course we are uh, um, specialized in the in the in the smaller uh, uh hubs or smaller um finer pitch pitches but um we need to say that uh, we also produce uh duplex hop cutters with larger uh, profiles. So 
the one you do see here on the screen was a module of uh, 0 0.635, 635, ODP40. Um, it, it was uh, 24 millimeters uh, in diameter, uh, two times 22 millimeters uh, of hop cutting. So left si hand side and right hand side. And uh, on, on each side, you see the, the, hub, the control hub. So you can, it's easier to, uh, to set up the, the, the run out. And the bore diameter was eight. So we really can do any type of dimension. Should you want to have a, a smaller uh, region for the, for the debering part, so for the zone two, um, well, on, on, that, on that particular, so on a ring, uh, it's easy because you can, you can just switch it and you have the, the complete part uh, for doing the debering and the, the gear cutting. Um, but of course, if you are using a, a, a double or a duplex uh, cutter, hop cutter on a shank, we might uh, make the, the second region smaller uh, for the debering. Okay, so I think uh, uh, I come um, uh, slowly to the to the end before uh, going to the to the Q and R to the question and, and answer. Um, let me check if I do have a, a question. Um, okay, so I will begin with the first one. What uh, talking about the price, what is the, the price uh, of such uh, cutter? Mm. Let's go directly to where it, uh, to where it hurts then. <laughs> no, um, so let's get back and, and think about when you do it uh, on a normal way. So when you, when you have to have uh, two hubs, you need to pay it twice. Even if it's the same, you need to pay it twice. Um, more or less, when you do use uh, the duplex cutter on a on a shank or on a on a on a ring type, uh, the the price of the of the cutter will be one point five. It would be for one. So it's uh, so you save you save time uh, in setup and and uh, of the machine, uh, and also it costs to you less than two uh, hop cutters. So it it was actually a good question for. <laughs> and uh, easy to answer. Uh, second question, let me check. Um, can we regrind these hubs? Ah, that's a good question. Um, let me uh, go back on, the, on this slide here. So you see that uh, this slide is, uh, is showing you the, the cutting region. So you have it. Uh, the, the, the front one and the next one. So should you want to, to regrind it, you, you come in the middle, directly in the middle, and you go touch on the left and on the right, and you have done the, the regrinding exactly as you would be, as you would do um, on a normal hub. So yes, you can regrind it, it's easy. It's easier on a, on a, on a ring type because you, you have more space on the back, but you can do it uh, also on a, um, on a shank type. Shouldn't you have the, the right tools or the, rind, the grinding wheel to, to make it? You can send us back and we can, of course, do it, uh, uh, do it for you. Let's go back to the questions. Uh, I have uh, three more. Uh, how do we manage the tilt of the hub while changing the direction? Okay, uh, so we we go deeper on the technique. So, uh, as I showed you, the the helix is, the, is are the same uh, on both uh, cutting region. So it, you you have the the helix angle, but as you do turn or you do reverse the rotation of both the cutter and the part, you do not need to have uh, to change anything on the on the tilt situ uh, position. So you don't have to, to, to do anything but putting the, the right helix angle that are uh, mentioned on the, on, on, the, on the design or the, the drawing that we will send you. And you do 
first operation, second operation, and then it's clear. So no need to change anything on the on the tilt on the angle of your of your hop cutter. Um, what about uh, hub grinding of duplex hub? Uh, our uh, hub are grinding on both sides. Um, yes. Um, so once again, if um, you need to 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 think that uh, both uh, hubs are working on the opposite way. So you see on the here. Uh, do do you see my my mouse, I hope so. So on the first region, on the on, on the right hand side of the of the cone of the of the dome, uh, this will cut like this. So the the cutter will will cut uh, uh, counterclockwise, and on the back it will cut clockwise. So they, if you want, they are both uh, grinded. They are uh, they they are they are sharp on both sides. And um, but you cannot do uh, the vice versa. So you you cannot use the the cutter on one way on in, on the other way for from the same zone. I hope uh, it was uh, it was a clear answer. Uh, the third question or the, the fifth question: Can each row teeth give same profile? Yes, uh, the um, they are all the same profile. So you can you you we call that shifting so you can cut the the part uh, on one region of the if let's say if you if you use this on a on a on a cutting region like this you use this to make the 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 gear when you see it's uh, becoming wear it, when it becomes uh, to to have wear you just shift to a, to another zone and um, you do it again until you come to to the end of your uh, region of uh, or our cutting area, but uh, yes, it, all the teeth of one zone and actually on the other zone as well uh, have this exactly the same profile. Okay, yes, I do not see any question, but you might have some some more to to come. Um, ah, I just have another one. Can coated hub need uh, can Coated hub need coating all time after regrinding. Ah, okay. Um, no. Uh, usually, what we do is um, if the if the hub is coated, uh, we do re it will be coated all over. And each time you do regrind, it will remove the the the, the coating only where you do regrind. But we usually we don't we don't send it to the regrinding anymore. Uh, yeah. Uh, Again, with the, the all the profile will be coated, but really on the face, in the cutting face, you won't have uh, the uh, the coating. But usually that's uh, how we how we do. Um, okay, so I leave you also some uh, some time to 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 ask uh, further more questions. But I wanted to sh to share with you, with you the the poll. Uh, that we did so about the industry uh, you you are working in or uh, where the the hubs are or the gears are, are used so 55 58 percent sorry uh, are used in the ios space uh, 50 percent uh, in the medical uh, 42 percent in the automotive uh, there and there are other watch industry and dental Okay, it's interesting to see that uh, aerospace is uh, is uh, is big for you. Uh, what are the problem uh, you you uh, you encounter with the with the gear production? Okay, so that's clear. Uh, nine out of ten, so ninety percent uh, tells me that uh, you do have a problem with burrs. Burrs and profile geometry. So okay, so you are really exactly on this on the on the right spot. So using our uh, duplex cutter will solve the burr uh, like this. I mean right away. Uh, then you do have the axial uh, runout, uh, axial and radial uh, runout. Yep. So here as well, <laughs> yeah. No need to care about it. Just to have the uh, as it would be uh, just one hop cutting tool. So really good for you. 
and uh, profile geometry was also one uh, uh, one issue. The material uh, that you are uh, cutting. So once again, excuse me uh, for uh, not having translated the the. Um, the materials, but uh, apparently you 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 did get it. So most of you are um, cutting steel and stainless steel, okay, and then uh, brass and aluminum, and then finally beryllium copper. All right. Um, oh, I have uh, many more questions. Good. So, is there a process for setting the deburring hub accurately on the back face? It emits on the center line of the hub. Well, um, as I tried to explain, the, the profile is ex or the, 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 the helix angle is exactly the same on both uh, sides of the cutter. So that means you, you, if you have the two uh, cutting region, so uh, one and two, one, one and two, uh, you do cut the gear on the, on the one, you go there, you do, you go there, any, any way on the on the second area, you will be synchronized and, and perfectly aligned with your uh, uh, with your gear. So no no worry about that. As they are completely as they are monoblock, uh, they, they they were grounded exactly on the same machine at the same time. You do not need to care about it. It's like you would be shifting in a way. Just you do the shift, but reversing uh, both axes or spindle. So really, no, um, no worry about uh, getting wrong uh, geometry or not being aligned. You will be it. Uh, uh, you you will be uh, automatically. Um, what is the difference between positive rack and negative rack angle of hub? Um, well, I mean. The the cutting the, the the cutting gauges are made uh, on one way if you want. So the the angle on the on the back of the of the cutting gauge is the same as the one on the on the front and identically uh, on, uh, on the back side as well. So if you do have the V like this for the both uh, uh, grinding, uh, it will be the same angle. However, as it is a logarithmic um, uh, rake, you don't need to care about um, um, these angles in the back. So they are the same uh, rake angle uh, on the front and on the back. Okay, I think uh, I think I made the. The, the most of it. Uh, what I wanted also to, to share with you uh, for the one uh, who don't have the my information. I went a bit too fast, excuse me. Tuck. Uh, I wanted to, <laughs> to share my uh, contact information. So I think you do see you see now, yep. So um, don't hesitate to contact me uh, or info at uh, LBSA for any kind of, uh, of question or request. We are there for you. You might also find uh, a lot of information on our web website. Uh, don't hesitate also to, uh, to follow us on our uh, various uh, uh, social medias like uh, uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, you also do have uh, the YouTube, um, the YouTube channels, which are really uh, uh, interesting to to see the uh, to see the, the, the these videos. So this video will be this video will be put on uh, on YouTube in some weeks from now. Uh, in um, in uh, December, we will have uh, uh, our next webinar. So it will be middle of December, right before uh, um, uh, Christmas uh, period. Uh, it will be apparently uh, dedicated to uh, deep milling uh, for, uh, I mean, to, to, to make the, the precision and, and high performance uh, deep milling. 
and uh, yeah, I, I hope uh, everything was uh, was uh, great for you. I wish you good luck, good health. Don't hesitate to contact me and uh, good machining. All right, thank you. Bye bye.